Okay, so I got something I want to show you. Um, if you notice on our targets, we always put all the data on the targets when we go out to shoot, shoot these guns. And you'll see where it says, remove firing pin, ran all the brass into the chamber to check the fit. And I was just doing that here, and because of what we found, I thought I would show this. So this is, it, it's not finished yet. This gun is not finished yet. This is a left hand 30 Nosler. Solid bottom, single shot, 343 neck in it. It's gonna be set up for burger 210s, one well, indeed all the, everything is done except for fit and finish on it. But I was, I had brass that I had already prepared for it. Like I prepared it quite a long time ago, a couple months ago, and I was getting ready to go on to the rest of this. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna run that brass in there. So I wanna show you something. So again, this is a bat HR solid bottom single shot, left hand. When you, this is the cocking piece, do not turn it in, that's the fired position. Turn it the opposite way, away from the fired position. Take out the firing pin. Now this has a sliding, pl sliding plate extractor in it, but I have the, the ejector. The plunger has been removed so that I can actually feel it. And so, See what you got right here? No resistance, right? And so I happen to have two Manson headspace gauges for 30 Nosler. And, and why two? You remember in other videos I've said some, some guns I have, some cartridges I have two, three, four headspace gauges. The more headspace gauges you have, the better off you are because the better feel you can get for what is going on. I don't own any no-go gauges. These are all go. The way I find out, the way I see if I'm over the go is with using shim stock. So I have shim stock in one thou, two thou, three thou, five thou increments that I have discs made out of it that I can lay into the bolt face, right? So, and I already did this when I was building the gun. So here's headspace gauge number one, right? Okay, just drops. Basically zero movement. I did use the shim stock in this. It will take a one, but it would this this headspace gauge would not take a two. In other words, it just literally stops right there with the two thou. All right. On this one, and they have dates on them. That's how I can tell which is which. Notice, same deal. Just drop straight in. This one here has a li it's a sm little bit smaller gauge. This would take a one easily, and with the two it almost closes with no resistance. So I would assume this headspace gauge is, I don't know, two, three, four, ten thousandths shorter than this headspace gauge. But I needed you to see that so that you can understand what I'm gonna do. So, this is 30 Nosler with 30 Nosler brass. And whenever I do brass work, I always just cut the, cut the ends of the boxes off. And then, these are the, the, Lot number, and this is the exact same lot number. And, and this brass, I've been using out of this same lot number for quite a while now. And anyway, so there was 50 pieces. And what I wanna show you is, watch. Just drops, right? Look at that, the handle just drops, right? I don't know whether I'm gonna sit and go through all of these again, because I already did it. That's why we're making the video, right? Look. Handle just drops. By the way, you know, you can, you can grab this and you can feel how much there is beyond, beyond the brass itself. So, and again, I could put those shims in there on the brass because the brass is slightly smaller than the headspace gauge, right? Anyways, I went through all these and they just all close the same. I mean, look, you can tell there's a little bit of difference, even in all the ones that where the bolt drops. I mean, they're slightly different, right? So I went through all these. See it? Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put those aside so that we don't get them mixed up. Now watch, same exact boxes of brass, same exact lot number, watch. Okay, now like that one. See, you can crush that one. 
Okay, so that one will crush. Look at this. I mean, if you took this hammer, you'd have to beat that down to get that one to go. Okay, and where is that? It's in the shoulder. Okay, watch. I mean, that one, that one's between these two. So I'm kind of putting them in order here. So this one, this one would go with the crush. Those two are hard, look. That one would crush. You can literally feel it pushing the shoulder back. Watch. That one would crush. That one will almost go. You can almost put that in this other pile. But there's something that I've said this before, but this is important if you want really serious accuracy. If you have non-uniform or dissimilar bolt closure, in other words, a bolt closure that's easy, a bolt closure that's hard, they will not shoot to the same point of impact. That is a fact. I have seen it dramatically on the target where you had Bolt closure easy, putting one group up here, bolt closure hard, putting another group directly underneath it. All right, so that one, that one is, will sort of crush, watch. That one would sort of crush. I'm gonna keep these to the side. And look, I mean, I could, I could force that one. So what you have here is you have five, that you could close it with crush on it. You have one that would take some pretty serious resistance. And then these two, I mean, same deal. I could, that one, I could push that one down. I don't want to do it, but I could. But this one, that one would never go. I mean, even if I slammed that, it's not going to go. So here's the, here's the deal. Run your brass into your chamber before you load it all. That way you can see what you really have. And you gotta think about this. If this was a dangerous game gun, you definitely wanna run all your brass through. Even run all your loaded, say it's factory ammunition. You're buying factory ammunition, say for a 375 H and H to go to Africa. Remove the firing pin so you don't have an accident. Run them all into the chamber to see how they close. Because just imagine, just imagine you had a Cape Buffalo charging you from 50 yards away, and this was the next shell, or the, say the first shell up, and it won't chamber. <laughs> that, that could be a bad deal. Anyways, I just wanted to show that to you. There is other videos coming soon. They're already done. She just hasn't got to them. We're gonna have the final 33 XC coming soon. All right, see you later.